For the second set of notes in section 12.2, you are going to work through the following sample problems on your own. You can for sure do problems two and three, and I encourage you to try number four, but please keep in mind that this pyramid is not a regular pyramid, but rather it's a rectangular one. So we cannot use the formula that we derived earlier to find the lateral area of the pyramid in number four. We'll go through that problem in detail towards the end of the video. Please pause the video at this time and work through the problems. For number two, you should recognize the fact that this is a square pyramid, so it indeed is a regular pyramid. So to find the lateral area, we could do one half of the perimeter of the base times the slant height, which would give us the areas of our triangles. And we're working with the perimeter of our base. We know that each side is six, so our perimeter is 24. But then to find our slant height, we have to work with the right triangle. Since the altitude or height of the pyramid hits directly at the center of the base, this red segment here is half the length of the side, so it's three. And then we have a three, four, five family, making our slant height five. So that means that the lateral area of our pyramid is 60 units squared, which is the area of our lateral faces or triangles. To find the area of the base, it's pretty straightforward. It's a square, so we could just do side squared with a side of six to get 36 units squared. And finally, to find our total area of this pyramid, we have to take our lateral area, which is 60 units squared, and add on the area of our base to get 96 units squared. For number three, we're working with a regular hexagonal pyramid. So once again, since this pyramid is regular, to find the lateral area, we could do one half of the perimeter of the base times the slant height. The perimeter of our base can be found very easily. It's 96. But our slant height, we have to draw that in. Keep in mind 17 is a lateral edge, and then we know that one side of the base is 16, so when we draw in our altitude, it breaks it up into 8 and 8. So we have an 8, 15, 17 family we're working with. So our slant height is 15, giving us a lateral area of 720 units squared. Next, we have to find the area of our base. Well, this is a regular polygon, so we can do one half apothem times perimeter. Only thing is, we do not have the apothem given to us. So we have to find out what the length of our apothem is. When we draw in this segment to the side, we end up breaking up the 16 into 8 and 8. And then since each interior angle of a regular hexagon measures 120 degrees, when we draw in our radius, it creates a 30, 60, 90 triangle, making our apothem 8 radical 3. And then we already knew our perimeter from before, which is 96. So our base area is 384 radical 3 units squared. And to find the total area, we're adding those two together. But since the 720 does not have a radical 3, our final answer is 720 plus 384 radical 3 units squared. We cannot combine them any further. So we just leave the plus sign there in between. And then finally, for number four, we want to find the lateral area of this compound figure. We have a rectangular pyramid sitting on top of a rectangular prism. So to find the lateral area of this figure, we have to find the lateral area of the prism and add it on to the lateral area of the pyramid. But the pyramid is not regular. So we cannot use our one-half perimeter base times slant height formula. Let's think back to our prior knowledge. We know that we could find the lateral area of the prism by finding the perimeter of the base and multiplying it by the height. So we're doing 56 times 6, which then gives us the lateral area of the prism to be 336. But now we have to find the lateral area of the pyramid, which is made up of those four triangles. And those four triangles are not congruent because we have one side here, which is the length of 10. Since opposite sides of the rectangle are congruent, that other red segment is also 10, which then means that these two triangles here, these two red triangles, must be congruent. They're going to be sharing the same base of 10 and then the same slant height. So if we could find the area of one of the red triangles and then multiply it by two, we'd get the area of both of those red triangles. So we're halfway there. Now we also have this length of 18. So for the triangle in front, that base is 18, and the triangle behind it's the same base, and they share the same slant height also. So those two purple triangles are going to be congruent. So if we could find the area of one purple triangle, multiply it by two, we have our purple triangles.
Now let's find the area of one of the red triangles. We know the base is 10, but we have to find our height. So I drew that in there. Since one side of the rectangle is 18, half of it is 9. So we create a 3, 4, 5 family there, 9, 12, 15, which gives us our height of the red triangle to be 15. So to find the area of that, we're going to multiply by 2 since we have two of them. So to find the area of one of them, we do one half of our base, which is 10, for the red triangle there, times our height, which we found was 15, using right triangles and Pythagorean theorem families. So since we're multiplying it by 2, since there are two triangles, that reduces, and we're just left with 150 for the areas of the red triangles. Moving on to the purple triangles, we know that the base of our purple triangle is 18, but we have to find our slant height again, so I'm drawing it in there in blue. So this is going to be a little bit tough to visualize, so I'm going to draw another triangle off to the side here to hopefully give you a better perspective. We know that one leg of the right triangle is the altitude of the pyramid, or height of the pyramid, which is 12. And then to find the other leg, we have to use that side of the rectangle, which is 10. And the other leg is half of it, which is 5, since the altitude hits directly at the center of the base. So it's a 5, 12, 13 family. So then the height of our triangle is 13. So we can do 2 times 1 half of 18, which is the base of our triangle, times 13, which is the height, and remember we multiplied by 2 since we have two purple triangles that have the same area. Reducing that, we get 234 for the areas of the purple triangles. So to find our total lateral area, we add all of that up to get 720 units squared. Next, we have to find our base area. Keep in mind that this yellow base is the only base that's showing. The base of the pyramid is not showing since it's a compound figure it's being covered. So we just have to find the area of that rectangle at the bottom, which is 180 units squared. And then last but not least, we have to find our total area of this compound figure. We know that the lateral area was 720 units squared and that the base area is 180 units squared. So the total area of this compound figure is 900 units squared.